What's up guys? Today I'm gonna to take you through every pickleball rule that you need to know in 2024. These are the rules that I see so many players breaking, so you need to make sure that you know these so that everything is fair for you and your opponents. Some of these will be a checkup if you're already familiar with the rules, but it's extremely important that you know them so that there's no confusion on the courts. Keep in mind, I'm not going through all the rules, just the main ones that I see people messing up. At the end of the video, I'm gonna take you through a few brand new rules that just came out in 2024. So if you don't know them, make sure to stay tuned. To start though, I'm gonna take you through some of the main rules that I see way too many players breaking. Helping me today, I have my sister Kennedy. So the first rule that I wanna go over and probably the number one rule that I see players breaking is the serving height rule on a volley serve. So on the volley serve, the three main rules are that when you hit the ball, your paddle face, the highest point of your paddle face needs to be below your wrist, you need to be using an upward motion, and most importantly, you need to make contact with the ball below your waist. So if you imagine a red line on your waist, you need to make contact with the ball below it. And if you play pickleball, I guarantee you've seen people doing something like this, where they're hitting it way higher than that. And why that's not good is because if you're hitting the serve too high, you get a huge advantage in terms of how hard you can hit the ball and you have a better angle over the net. So if you're hitting the serve above the height of your waist, it's just not really fair, right? So at the pro level, there's been a lot of different rules that they put into place to prevent this from happening. But what's important to remember is that when you're serving out of the air, this doesn't apply to the drop serve, when you're serving out of the air, you need to make contact with the ball below your waist. So even if I'm to serve about here, that's not legal. So you wanna make sure your paddle is facing down below your waist like this. The thing that's weird about this rule is that if you're playing a rec game, it's kind of tough to point out to someone that they're serving illegally. So what I like to do is if they're serving really illegal, let's say they're making contact at like shoulder height, that's where I think it's safe to say that you can say something. But if it's just on the edge in a rec game, that's probably not making that much of a difference. I'd let a referee make that call. But I think for your own serve, make sure you're serving it below your waist, like this. And guys, from that angle, you can still hit it really hard if you're using top spin and you're getting good paddle speed. If you wanna go deeper on the serve, we have a bunch of videos on that, so check them out. Just make sure, guys, you're making contact below the waist if you're hitting out of the air. And another rule I wanna go over is in regards to the drop serve. So when it comes to the drop serve, none of the three rules about paddle angle and height when you hit the ball matter, but there is one rule in terms of how you drop the ball, which I have seen players breaking. I think a lot of players know this rule, but pretty much the only rule on the drop serve you really need to think about is when you're dropping the ball, you can't propel it down. So you can't throw it down like I did there because that just makes the ball bounce too high. So you need to make sure that you just drop it with gravity like that. So just release the ball and let it fall down. This is legal. This is legal. And to give yourself a little extra boost, you should probably drop it from a higher point so that it bounces higher. And bouncing it from here, it's a very low bounce. I can't really even hit the ball. So drop it from a high point. But there's actually one more rule that I want to talk about on the serve. It's actually more etiquette than a rule, but it is in the rule book. Whenever you're the serving player, make sure to wait until your opponent's in position, like Kennedy is there, they're looking at you, waiting for the serve, then serve. What you don't want to do is serve while they're walking to get ready or they're not looking at you because obviously that's not fair and you don't want to win because they're not ready. You want to win because you're the better player. So make sure they're ready. That's one of the rules. It's also just good pickleball etiquette. The next rules that I want to go over though are in relation to calling the ball when it's out. And as you know, this can be a little bit controversial. So the first thing I want to go over is when to call the ball out. So what's important to know is that you can't call the ball out before it bounces. So if you call the ball out while it's still in the air, Technically, that's not allowed. And even though it might be going out, you wanna wait until the ball bounces. The next thing to keep in mind is that if you wait too long after the ball bounces to call it out, if your opponents are nice, they'll probably give it to you still, but you wanna make sure you're calling it immediately right after the bounce or right when it bounces. So a good out call looks like this. Out. So as you saw, I said it verbally, and I also raised up my finger, which is what you do to signal that the ball is out. So I recommend always verbally saying it and using your finger to signal because your opponents might not hear you and that can create some controversy. So always verbally say that the ball is out and use your finger. The next part of calling the ball out and probably the most important part is when you can call the ball out. And this has to do obviously with where the ball is landing. So the rule book states that to call the ball out, you need to clearly see a space between the ball and the line. So you can see here, when I have this ball on the ground, you can see that there's green right before you see the ball. 
right? Where this could become a little iffy, though, is if the ball is overhanging on the line. So you see here, you guys can actually see from that angle that there's a space, but as we go more towards the line, which a lot of the time you'll be looking at it from this angle, you might not be able to see a space. So this is where I think that there can be a little bit of confusion, but what I like to advise to my students is that if you can't tell that the ball's out 100%, don't call it out. Just give your opponents the benefit of the doubt. If you're just playing a recreational game, it's not that important. There's not that many calls like this anyways. But if you can clearly tell that the ball's contact point is on the outside of the line, then you should call it out. So it's important to note that even if the ball is overhanging the line, it is out, right? So if the ball is contacting the ground outside of the line, regardless of where it's over, it's out. So if you can tell that this is the case 100%, call it out. I don't think you need to be that careful in regards to that. But one thing that I advise is just good etiquette is that if you call the ball out and your opponents are angry about it or they question it, if you're just playing a rec game and you know it was close, maybe you weren't 100% sure, you can just give them the benefit of the doubt. I don't think it's super important, right? One call, it's not going to happen very often. So if you aren't 100% sure and your opponents are asking you if you're 100% sure or maybe they're mad about it, you can just give them the call. That will keep the, the vibes on the court good and it'll prevent players from thinking that you're cheating them. You guys, next I'm gonna remind you of the non-volley zone or kitchen rules so you don't mess them up. Before I get into that though, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Every video that we make is designed to help you learn more about the game of pickleball. So if you're getting more into it in 2024, make sure to head below the video and click the subscribe button. Also, when you're down there, make sure to click the like button. This will help spread the video more so that more players know the rules. But back to the kitchen rules. If you play pickleball, I hope that these are some of the first rules that you learned. But where I still see players getting it wrong is with the momentum after they hit the ball. So all you really need to know is that you probably know that you can't hit a volley when you're standing in here, of course, that's the main rule. But you also can't hit a volley where your momentum carries you into the kitchen. So this would be illegal because my momentum after the shot carries me in. So after you hit a volley, you need to get your balance, then you can go back into the kitchen. If your momentum is carrying you in from the shot, even if it's after, technically it's illegal. And if you think about it, it makes sense because I could technically just lean over and then fall in after, which I can really reach a lot farther by doing that. So if you're hitting a volley, you need to make sure you hit it behind the kitchen and you keep your balance behind the kitchen until the next shot. Now guys, I'm gonna take you through the new rules for 2024. But if I missed anything so far, make sure to comment any rules related questions you have and another player should be able to help. So the first new rules that we need to go over are in regards to starting off the point and whether or not the returning player can stop the point if they think that the serving player did something wrong. So if I'm the serving player and Kennedy as the returner thinks that I called the score wrong, she's technically allowed to stop the point before she hits the return if she thinks that there's something wrong. But the new rule is that if she's wrong about the score being wrong, I get the point. So you have to be careful. To stop the point after your opponent hits the serve, you need to be sure that they called the score wrong. And in that case, if you're right that the score is wrong, you replay the point. So you have to be a little bit careful about stopping the point. If you aren't sure, you should probably play out the full point, then talk about the scoring after. But this year, they also added positioning into this. So if you're the serving player and you start off the point in the wrong position, or vice versa, you're the returning player and you start off the point in the wrong position, you can actually stop the point at any time. So if you see that your opponent is serving on the wrong side of the court or they're switched up with their partner, you can stop the point after the return or at any point during the rally. So this is just to prevent positioning issues. So if you're serving and they call the score wrong, you have to correct them before you hit the shot. But if they're serving or you're returning and the positioning is wrong, you can stop the rally at any time. The next rule is in regards to a draping net. So if you hit the ball and it goes over the net and see how the net is sort of jetting out like this, maybe it's doing that because of wind or just that's the way the net's built. But if it goes over the net and hits the draping net like that and sort of just stops bouncing, that constitutes a replay of the point. So before this, if the ball went over the net and hit the metal beam like, like that, that would also constitute a replay. But this year they added in that if it hits the draping net, that's a replay as well. So pretty much if the ball goes over the net and anything happens as a result of the net, you redo the point. If the ball hits the metal beam on this side, so if I hit the metal beam and it goes over, that's a fault, so I would lose that point. So nothing that happens on this side of the net matters. Obviously, if it hits the net and goes over, that counts as, as long as it's not a serve. But 
The new rule is that if the ball goes over the net and hits a draping net, replay the point. Now though, I'm gonna take you through what I think is the biggest rule change in 2024, which is in regards to carry. So a carry is where you catch the ball on your paddle and you fling it towards your opponent. I see this happening a lot when the ball gets hit over somebody, they like scoop it like that and try to make it in. So in 2024, regardless of whether they're intentional or unintentional, carries are illegal. So the definition of a carry is when you catch the ball on your paddle and you fling it towards your opponent. What's important to distinguish though is the difference between a carry and a double hit. So a double hit is where I hit the ball twice, but my paddle is headed in the same direction the whole time. So I'm not catching it on my paddle, I just hit the ball twice in the same direction. So there's not much of an advantage to doing this. And I'm not moving my paddle backwards ever to catch the ball, I'm moving it forward the whole time. But maybe I'm hitting it slowly or maybe it hits the throat of my paddle so that it makes me accidentally hit the ball twice. Regardless, it's legal. It's not necessarily giving you an advantage. So whether you're trying to do it or not trying to do it, double hits are legal and carries are illegal. The next rule I wanna go over though is in regards to a cracked ball. So if at some point during a rally, you realize that the ball is cracked, you need to finish the rally before you say anything. After, if you realize that the ball is cracked like this one, you and your opponent should decide whether or not you think this affected the result of the point. And if it did, you can replay the point. If you don't think that the cracked ball affected the result of the point, just go to the next point and whoever won point wins the point. And guys, on a side note, make sure to send this video to the main people that you play with so you're all on the same page with the rules. As I said earlier, the serving rules are super important and are probably the most broken and can give you a big advantage. But even if you're following them, you can still serve super hard. I have a full video on all the techniques of how to serve properly. So if you wanna get better at serving, go watch that.